If you've completed the Whispers in the Wall quest and reached rank 2 with the Cavia Syndicate, you'll be able to unlock the Helminth Coalescent segment. This allows you to merge two Archon Shards together into one of three new colours, each with four different buffs to try out. This video will look at the Violet Shards to see what they can do and who uses them best. I'm Nick Engineer, let's solve a practical problem. The fusion of shards is permanent, with an Azure and Crimson Shard coming together to give you one Violet Shard. If you combine two Tau Forges, you'll instead get a Tau Forge Violet Shard with 50% stronger effect. It is not possible to combine one Normal and one Tau Forge Shard. The Violet Shard has four buffs to pick from, two focused on electricity, one upgraded from a Crimson feature, and one related to a couple Amber features, strangely enough. The first of these buffs then is to gain plus 10% ability damage on enemies affected by the electricity status effect. This is functionally identical to the emerald option for the same, bar for changing the triggering status type. Choosing when to use this shard is pretty easy. If you've already achieved everything you want to with your other Archon shards, such as reaching any key strength breakpoints for armor stripping, and your abilities do a considerable amount of damage, and you intend to cover your enemies in electric procs, then you should use this option. As you might tell, this is pretty niche. You can apply the Electric Procs with a Status Primer. This is more beneficial than doing it with the Emerald Shard, as you can put both Electricity and Viral on almost any Status Priming weapon, whereas Corrosive would usually prevent Viral being modded for simultaneously. Still, a single Viral Status Proc will be applying a 100% bonus to your damage on enemy health, versus each Shard providing only 10% on Electric Proc. The most effective use of these shards is on those frames whose damage also puts out electric procs frequently enough to impact your damage. There are a handful of frames which can innately cause the electric status. Chroma has its electric breath and elemental ward, Mirage has sleight of hand, Vorban's test of nervos, Varuna with fangs of raksh, Volt with shock, or even Wisp with shock motes. Each of these I've named does so either weakly or inconsistently enough that it's not particularly helpful. If you were hoping to use Volt's Discharge ability, that doesn't actually cause the electric status effect. Citrine, Gyre, and Lavos on the other hand can all reliably apply the electric status with their abilities and produce usable damage from those abilities. Citrine's Prismatic Gem is basic enough to deploy and use, and you can enhance its damage with these shards, though in many cases that may not be the damage you're relying on. Lavos can shove electric procs into any of his abilities, and it comes innately in his Transmutation Probe. If you're using his Catalyze for damage, the shards can help buff that a little further, though any new status proc applied will be 10 times more effective than a Violet Shard. But the out-and-out -out winner is definitely Jaya. She is constantly putting out electric effects, scales powerfully with them, and will easily score kills with her abilities if you also include a defense strip like Pillage. Because of that, she is able to get value from these Violet Shards to enhance her damage and therefore kill rate with her rote as well. This is a very high investment build, but it's also one that pays a return on that investment in maxing out her capabilities. You don't need to go for fully Tau Forged here, but the 15% strength from the shards is crucial. As I mentioned earlier, the Violet Shards for the damage bonus should only be added after everything else is done, and then just because there are slots left over. Even with two Tau Forged, it's merely a 30% conditional ability damage bonus, not a complete change of capability. This next Violet Shard option, however, is incredibly impactful. You get plus 30% primary electricity damage as a modded bonus, with that increasing by 10 percentage points for each Azure, Crimson, and Violet Shard equipped, including the Shard giving this bonus in the first place. One Shard would give you a 40% bonus, two Shards would be 100%, as both Shards are getting plus 20% from matching colours, three Shards a 180% bonus, four Shards 280%, and 5 shards a staggering 400% bonus, or 600% Tau Forged. Indeed, if you slot these shards left to right on their own, those are the bonuses you'll get. At time of recording, however, there is a very significant bug. If you place in just one shard in the leftmost shard slot, you'll indeed get a 40% electricity bonus. Place it one slot further to the right, and it unexpectedly jumps to a 50% bonus. Each step further right increases that bonus by 10%, up to 80% total electric bonus with just one basic Violet Shard in the rightmost slot. It gets weirder. Place the Violet Shard in the leftmost slot for that 40% bonus, then equip an Azure Shard in the second slot. You get a 50% bonus. That's working as intended. 
If you put an Amber Shard in the second slot instead, the bonus drops again to 40%. So far, so good. Move the Amber to the right one slot, so we've got Violet, Empty, Amber, and the bonus jumps back up to 50%. But hang on, the Amber Shard doesn't give a 10% bonus to the Violet buff, so what's happening? After much testing with some community members, the situation is rather incredible. The bonus your Violet Shards will receive is based first on how far right the last filled slot is, and then how many slots from there to the far left are either the right colour or empty. Violet Shard in slot 1 on the far left? That's only one slot towards the right filled in, and it's the right colour, so you get one bonus on the Violet Shard. 30% base and one 10% bonus for 40%. Violet Shard in slot 3 in the middle? The rightmost filled slot is 3 slots in, and all slots 1, 2 and 3 do not contain a shard of the wrong colour, so you get 3 bonuses on the Violet Shard. 30% base plus 3 10% for 60%. If you do Violet Shard in slot 3, Amber in slot 4, the rightmost filled slot is now 4 slots in, but only 1, 2 and 3 are not the wrong colour, so you still only get 3 bonuses, totalling 60%. Move the Amber Shard to slot 2, the rightmost filled slot is now only 3 slots in again, the Violet. Except now, only slots 1 and 3 are not the wrong colour. This means only 2 bonuses. Oh yes, moving the Amber Shard from the right of the Violet to its left reduces the bonus. But if we move the Amber Shard all the way to the right end, slot 5 would now be filled, and slots 1 through 4 would all not have the wrong shard. So we climb to 4 bonuses. By moving around a shard that doesn't even match what should be triggering the bonus, we can raise or lower the total effect significantly. So, until this bug is fixed, there are two things you can do to maximise your bonus for any amount of shards. Number one, make sure the rightmost slot is filled with any azure, crimson or violet shard. Number two, remove any amber, emerald and topaz shards you can do without, either to leave empty or to replace with a correct colour to boost the electric bonus. With this, you'll get a full 80% electricity damage per violet shard set to this bonus, rather than the more granular bonus it's designed to be. You don't have to min-max it, and I surely expect this to get fixed soon after this video slash bug report goes live, but this is how it works for now. Bug aside, when and why would you actually want to use this shard? It's a modded electric bonus, which means it'll combine with other electric modding or innate electric, as well as any uncombined basic element in the weapon setup. It also only applies to your primary weapon, removing any combination with melee influence. The added electricity follows H-set rules for combination. Check out my guide on that if you need a reminder on how modded and external buffs combine together. For one shard while it's bugged, or two once it's fixed, you can get roughly the same bonus as Stormbringer, saving a whole mod slot on rifles that use it. With two bugged shards or three fixed shards, you can replace primed charged shell on shotguns. It's more niche than using a couple shards to replace a strength or duration mod, but it does expand your options and leans helpfully into the increasing number of powerful corrosive setups in the current meta. Due to the power of radiation against Eidolons, I believe a handful of these shards can make it even easier to get one-shot capable primaries. The obvious downside is that if you ever want a primary without electric, you'll either need to update the frame shards or just not use that warframe. Make sure you double check before you accidentally try to corrode the corpus or irradiate the infested. On to the third feature, we have the option to gain plus 25% melee critical damage, double to plus 50% if our Warframe's max energy is 500 or more. This is an exceptionally straightforward bonus. It's additive to mods, enhances your critical damage on melee, really simple stuff. Interestingly enough, the Crimson Shard this is made from can also provide a plus 25% melee critical damage buff. So ideally, the only reason you'd make and use this shard will be for use with a 500 energy Warframe. Thanks to the existence of Primed and Archon Flow, most Warframes can hit that 500 energy cap in a single mod. However, all of these frames cannot, including Ash Prime, Frost Prime, and Rhino Prime. For them, you'll need an additional boost of max energy, such as a Tau Forged Azure Shard for plus 75, reaching a total of 502.5 energy. If you want to use only normal flow, that further restricts you to only a minority of Warframes, which would reach the breakpoint. It should go without saying that Lavos and Hildren don't have a choice at all. The melee critical damage bonus applies to both normal melee weapons and exalted ones, making it a powerful but basic option for any eligible Warframe. It's similar to the first buff in that it's best used to fill otherwise unused shard slots. 
The difference is that it's much less demanding to use and far more widely applicable. Lastly then, we have the buff that gives you energy on picking up a health orb and health on picking up an energy orb. This is identical to the Equilibrium mod in how it operates, including allowing you to pick up an orb while at max first stat if the other could use it. What separates it from Equilibrium is that it has less than one fifth the effect. Rather than needing three basic shards to mimic the effect, as with using Crimson to copy Intensify and Continuity, or Amber for preparation, you'd need five shards to still be just a bit behind Equilibrium. In theory then, you can use this final option to replace Equilibrium in builds which use it, such as on Varuna, Citrine, Protea, Nezha, or any other orb generator. But Equilibrium provides you more converted health and energy than you could possibly use, then you might consider the shards. The problem really is that 20% is a very low conversion rate. A standard health orb would give you 10 energy, and a standard energy orb just 5 health. It could be worse, it could be Equinox's passive at only 10%, but the shard is closer to that than a well-ranked Equilibrium. Min-maxing purposes, this combination shard might allow you to straddle the line on a build to make it just barely work. Usually though, if you're in a position to want an Equilibrium effect, I'd suggest going for the full mod to really get value out of the orbs you collect. Like with all the other Archon shards, there are some good options and some weaker options, with a couple ways to either replace mods or just ramp up your effectiveness even higher than before. Plus there's that weirdness with the electricity bonus on primaries. If you're watching this sometime after release, make sure to check the comments for a pinned note about any fixes. I hope this gives you some inspiration into where and why to use these violet options. That's all from me for now though, so as always, mod tight, slot right, and fight well Tenno.